Hello there. Criminals are on the loose all over the city, meaning there is chaos and anarchy all over the mean streets of New York. A deputy top of Empire State and two police departments are under attack, so I swing into action as fast as I can to help out both departments. The first police department that I go to help out is under attack by Electro, who traps every police officer inside the building. I quickly use my webs to destroy all four transformers powering Electro's electricity to stop the attack on the police department. I then swing on over to the next police department and Rhino appears only to leave anyway. I then beat up some escaped prisoners until Sable soldiers show up and they start attacking me because they think that I'm a black man under the mask instead of a white 20 something year old with a crippling gambling addiction. After dealing with the escaped prisoners and Sable soldiers I head on over to one of the feast locations to help Aunt May and Miles who are in a burning building. Your Jordan's a fake as fuck, Spider Man! <laughs> Aunt May and Miles are about to die so I help them out by preventing one of their inevitable deaths. My favourite cute little redhead arrives to help me save Aunt May and Miles. Aunt May gets to safety and then I attempt to murder Miles but unfortunately he manages to get to safety in time. The floor above me gets dropped on top of me and then Miles saves my life even if I did just attempt to murder him a few seconds ago. Mary Jane comes to come for me and even offers me a blowjob but Miles cockpocks me so I let out my inner Spider-Man Lotus. After kicking his ass, I tell him that if he ever cockboxed me ever again, I will do much worse to him next time. I then swing on over to Times Square to investigate the area because that was where the Devil's Breath got released. I follow the trail of the Devil's Breath and leads me into a secret base of operations for all my villains. I find a lot of weird audio tapes with strange recordings such as this one that is literally just the hamster dance. <laughs> Later on I find this tape which literally just has the perfect song ever made on it. At least one of my villains has good taste in music. Anyway I find something about Icarus and then the base explodes before Vulture snatches me and takes me to fight him and Electro. I beat up Electro a little bit and then Vulture steps in because he wants to get his own ass beaten too. I finish off Electro faster than you with your girlfriend in bed and then I finish off Vulture faster than the second plane hitting the second tower. I then decide to take a quick nap because fighting crime is almost as tiring as domestic terrorism. It seems like Scorpion is putting chemicals in the water that turn the frogs gay so I go to investigate and get injected with chemicals that turn the frogs gay. Gay frog chemicals are one hell of a drug. I analyse the gay frog chemicals that are in my system and it turns out that the fall of Constantinople is in the gay frog chemicals. I then try to find the flower that contains the rise of Constantinople to create a counter drug for the gay frog chemicals. The gay frog chemicals really are one hell of a drug because one moment I'm going into Dr Octavius's lab and then the next I'm taking part in some gambling putting it all on black. As I make my way to the end of the hands dimension I find the flower containing the rise of Constantinople and then make my way to a mini Oscorp lab to find a substance that turns the frog straight. The gay frog chemicals are making me hallucinate Dr Octavius telling me the benefits of edging yourself every night and then I'm back in gay frog land where I then make my way towards Octavius's lab so that I can create a counter drug to the gay frog chemicals. However, the gay frog chemicals make me fight multiple scorpions first so that I can prove to the gay frog chemicals that I am worthy to create a counter drug. I wake up from the gay frog chemical hallucinations in my underwear wearing a Spider-Man mask that you can buy for $9.99 at your local store and a raging erection. Now that I've dealt with the gay frog chemicals, I make my way towards the feast to find where that piece of shit Miles Morales is because he leaked my dick pics online whilst I was dealing with the gay frog chemicals. Aunt May tries to convince me not to harm Miles but I tell her that I can't make any promises because I'm going to castrate him with a rusty spoon for leaking my dick pics on the internet. Miles is sneaking around the docks trying to find antibiotics and then Rhino and Scorpion show up committing war crimes with illegal torture methods on a sable soldier to try and get information out of him. Miles makes a run for it to safety but he unintentionally brings attention to himself when the toolbox he used to get away falls and creates noise that Rhino investigates. As Miles makes his way out of the docks with antibiotics he has a few close calls with Rhino before he manages to get away to safety. I then make my way over to the docks to find some fan art. I 
At the docks, the big Russian guy in heavy amounts of steroids dressed in a rhino suit is sexually assaulting sable soldiers. I have to step in and tell him that's not cool. Hey dude, that's not cool. I beat up Rhino a little bit and then Scorpion shows up asking me about the fall of Constantinople. First I deal with Rhino since he is the bigger threat and then I deal with Scorpion who tells Rhino that he's a failure before Rhino rams him into a storage container to sexually assault Scorpion. Mary Jane then calls me to tell me that she wants to sneak into Norman Osborne's penthouse to find the location of the Devil's Breath Lab. So I tell her to wait for me to get in the area before she makes her move. Mary Jane sneaks towards the security room and gets herself a taser to help her get inside the security room. Once she's in, she quickly makes her exit because Norman Osborne is coming down with the lower sable. I slip into the elevator they just came out of to get up to Norman Osborne's penthouse. I quickly find a poked out mask but what's definitely not going to be for Norman Osborne when he becomes the Green Goblin later on in the Spider-Man series. There's a secret door here with a secret code so I find the key to Harry's room and find the hospital bed in his room meaning that he is suffering from ligma. Anyway the secret code is the date that Harry left to go to Europe or in an test tube full of green liquid. Norman Osborn returns with Silver Sable and some of her men so I make my way back to the secret door and enter the secret room. I then mess around a bit and find the location of the Devil's Breath Lab and then I see Martin Lee's supervillain origin story before I almost get caught by Silver Sable. I then sneak out to the penthouse balcony and the guard shoots his gun as he goes down alerting the Sable soldiers on the penthouse. Mary Jane then blocks the door to the balcony but Silver Sable shoots the glass door open and then Mary Jane attempts to commit suicide but luckily Spider-Man arrives just in time to save her. You are crazy. <laughs> You're amazing. <laughs> I take Mary Jane to feast and then we discuss how we are going to stop the fall of Constantinople and make sure the Devil's Breath antidote ends up in the right hands. I then swing on over to the Devil's Breath lab and Mr. Negative is already there forcing his way inside the lab to reach the antidote. I clear out the demons outside who are defending the entrance to the lab and once the demons are cleared out Sable soldiers arrive and I quickly take care of them. I start opening the door to the lab but Silver Sable shows up and starts talking dirty to me before she lets me into the lab. I follow Martin Lee's negative trail until he ambushes me and sends me into his negative realm. try to discuss the benefits of a balanced diet with Martin Lee but he starts telling me about his villain origin story that I don't care too much about because I'm only here to kiss men, wait I mean do yoga. I then touch a picture of his parents and then I get taken out of the negative realm. Dr Michaels hands over the devil's breath antecedent to Mr Negative who decides to try and torture the hell out of Norman Osborn but I'd save him in time to talk about this video sponsored the blue tablets in your uncle's cabinet. I throw a few computer monitors at his head until he unleashes his true inner theory. I quickly defeat his very persona because I'm not a soy boy beta cuckoo like he is. I take the devil's breath anti serum from Martin Lee and then Octopus Man shows up and bitch slaps Martin Lee for failing to do his part of the plan. He then tries to pin me down but I escape only for him to throw me around like a cum rag shortly later. He takes the devil's breath anti serum from me before he kidnaps Norman Osborne and leaves. Silver Sable arrives with Dr. Michaels and they take me out of it to feast. Silver Sable then starts to sound like my girlfriend instead of a kinky milf that likes to beat me up for her sexual pleasure. Thank you. You can thank me by not dying. My red-haired girlfriend then shows up and Silver Sable leaves so that things don't get too awkward between my two sexual partners. Dr. Michaels tells Mary Jane that I need to rest but I'm not a liberal so I do the opposite of rest. Aunt May is on her deathbed from the devil's breath so I quickly get out of here to take the antiserum from Octopus Man. The spider that was on Mary Jane since the penthouse then goes down and bites Miles meaning that he will be a Spider-Man pretty soon. I arrive at Dr. Octavius' lab to create a suit using the same stuff that Octopus Man used for his octopus eye. Arms. It's storming time. Octavius and Osborne have a political argument at the top of Oscorp Tower and Octavius drops Osborne because Octavius is a filthy Biden supporter and Osborne is a strong Trump supporter. Spider-Man manages to save Osborne before running up to the top of Oscorp Tower to get the anti-serum from Octopus Octavius. I throw a few things at Octopus Man's head and even showcase my superior striking ability. Octopus Man then manages to damage my mask a little bit and then he reveals that he knew it was me all along. Peter Parker gets pissed that he knew all this time 
time and breaks one of his octopus legs. I then beat him up on the side of the Oscorp Tower building like he was my son and I was his abusive alcoholic father coming home from the bar. I then intentionally stab myself with his octopus arm so that I can disconnect his neural link. I then pull out his hentai arm and then send him into some room where he lays there hopefully as uncomfortable as he possibly can. I pick up the devil's breath and the him and then he tries to convince me to help him out so I do just that by leaving him here to be taken away by the proper authority so that he can get the help he needs in prison. I visit Aunt May and it turns out she knew that I was Spider-Man the entire time. She then dies as I make the moral choice of whether to save one person for the lives of the many or save the lives of the many for the life of one. Peter Parker then cries beside Aunt May as she goes to a better place. Everyone in New York then starts getting vaccinated with the Devil's Breath anti serum and Aunt May gets buried next to Uncle Ben. Octopus Man gets put away in the raft where he deserves to be after the shit he just pulled. Peter Parker and Mary Jane meet up three months later and talk about life before Mary Jane says he can stay at her place until his new apartment is ready for him to move into before they kiss, meaning that they will live happily ever after. Miles helps Peter move into his new place and then Miles shows Peter that he has superpowers before Peter then reveals that he is actually Spider-Man. Norman Osborn then goes inside his secret room and it is revealed that Harry Osborn is being kept in a test tube of green liquid and a certain black symbiote that may or may not be featured in the next Spider-Man game. <laughs>